Imagine the wind shaking a building so much that people gathered around just to watch it fall. Now take that same situation and picture the architect climbing to the very top during a windstorm. The story of New York's very first skyscraper. Located at 50 Broadway, the tower building was just 11 stories tall, but it was a giant among its peers. At the time, nothing was that thin and that tall. Its height was about six times its width. And for 1889, you might as well be building on stilts, especially during high winds. But you see the architect, Bradford Lee Gilbert, he had something special up his sleeve. He had previously worked on bridge construction using iron and steel. And so when they asked him to build an 11 story building on about a 20 foot plot of land, he decided to do something different. You see, the traditional load-bearing masonry walls would take up too much interior space in the building. You basically have no rooms left for rooms. So for Gilbert, thin steel beams were his only option. He figured he'd turn the railroad bridge on its end and use iron girders to support the floors and the external walls. So he ran his foundations deep into the ground and extended them all the way up to the 11th floor. But to be honest, most people were skeptical. Even his own architect friends thought he was crazy. Their biggest critique was that the building would just sway too much during a windstorm and that swaying would eventually cause the support to give out, leading to an eventual collapse. And that's where Gilbert got clever. Once the building was finished, he took a plumb line and during the craziest windstorm of the year, he climbed to the very top. People gathered around thinking he was about to go down with the building. But Gilbert had engineered this publicity stunt. He used the plumb line to show everyone that the building wasn't swaying at all. In fact, it was completely still and his steel frame invention was working. After this, Gilbert had basically proven his point and the media ran with it. Once the steel frame design was proven safe, a new gold rush started. Literally everyone began building up. The tower building had inadvertently kicked off what is now known as the New York City skyscraper boom. And it was the first domino in reshaping the city's skyline. Every rich person started building their own building project. They wanted to see who could be the tallest in the world. Frank Woolworth, the five and dime store guy, eventually claimed that title in 1913 when he spent $13.5 million in cash to build the Woolworth Building. But by the late 1920s, the Chrysler Building and the Empire State Building started an even crazier battle. They both wanted to usurp Woolworth as number one, and they battled it out on a global stage. For about 11 months, the Chrysler Building had won the title. And then, after they finished the Empire State Building, they attached the spire to the top, and it won by 204 feet. The rest is history. From that moment on, New York became synonymous with the Empire State. And the skyscraper boom had given New York a completely different feeling to the rest of the world. It made people believe that this was the place where dreams became reality, where we were always pushing higher and higher. This little 11-story tower building, which would be a speck in comparison to the Empire State, literally birthed the financial district. But sadly, the one building that kicked it all off was demolished a few years later. By 1914, it was just another building. It was old and ordinary and outdated. And they tore it down just to make room for bigger and better. Today, if you walk by, it looks something like this. Just a regular office building. You wouldn't even know that this is the one that started everything. It's the reason we have a forest of giants in Manhattan today.